Okay, so welcome to section nine of the Russian Revolution Revision Guide. This is it, this is the big one. When people ask you about, oh, you've studied the Russian Revolution, what they're talking about is this bit, the October Revolution, when the Bolsheviks come to power. Remember, the Bolsheviks are the communists, when these guys take over. So far in this course, we've looked at two mini revolutions, if you like. The 1905 revolution, where the Tsar kind of said, okay, I'll give you some powers, I'll give you a little bit of reform, but nothing really changed properly. He made the Dumas, but he controlled them and they had no real power. So that was disappointing. Um, then, obviously, 1917, you have the first proper revolution, the February Revolution, the bourgeois revolution we looked at last time. And it looks at that point as if Russia is going to become a normal, functioning, Western-style democracy with regular elections and elected head of state and sort of control resting with the business owners and the professionals and the middle classes in these big cities that are appearing in this industrializing Russia. But that's not what people are talking about when they talk about the Russian Revolution. They are talking about when the communists take over, when Russia becomes communist. Okay, now, the October Revolution, when the Bolsheviks take over, is the beginning of the communist takeover, right? It's, it's a long, complicated story, and we're going to look at that in, over the next few sessions. But this is when Lenin and the Bolsheviks take over Petrograd, okay? So it's a big, big deal. Four points to this story that you need to learn, and then there's three reasons why the Bolsheviks were allowed to, have, to take power, why that opportunity was there for them, and what they did to seize that opportunity, okay? So the four things you can see on the slide there, number nine. Um, first of all, Lenin, who we've seen uh, has fled Petrograd after Kerensky, in charge of the provisional government, did a really good job to start with, arrests the Bolsheviks, arrests Trotsky, Lenin runs away. Now, because of the Kornilov revolt, Trotsky is allowed out of prison. The Bolsheviks are allowed out of prison. The, the Red Guard are given the, the, the weapons back and then become a powerful force again. Lenin uses this opportunity now, 10th of October, he sneaks back into Petrograd. And when he gets there, his influence is key. And you can see that's one of the three boxes underneath on the four. Lenin's influence is key. Lenin is the most radical of the Bolsheviks. And he gets there to Petrograd when many of the Bolsheviks are starting to think maybe we should support the Petrograd Soviet, maybe we should team up with the Mensheviks. We don't need to be quite as radical as maybe Lenin wants us to be in his April thesis. But Lenin comes back into the city, barges back into the Bolshevik meetings, and with powerful speeches, he convinces people that no, now is the time for the Bolsheviks to take power, and to take power with violence, with force, to use that Red Guard they've got with their weapons to push and take over the provisional government um, right now, okay? When this happens, Kerensky, obviously, who we've said is weakened anyway because of the Kornilov of uh, revolt, panics. And so what he tries to do, he tries to be a bit sneaky. He orders the military units, the army regiments in and around Petrograd. He looks at them and he said, which ones support the Bolsheviks? He writes up a list and he says, right, I'm going to order all of those Bolshevik-supporting army soldiers out of the city. That way I will feel safer and the Bolsheviks won't have as many supporters. So he gives that order, but the army soldiers immediately know what he's trying to do. And they say, ah, you ain't doing that to us. So instead, they get together and they form something called the Military Revolutionary Committee, the MRC. That's the second point on the slide. Okay. And the MRC instead pledged loyalty to the Petrograd Soviet and to the Bolsheviks. So again, Kerensky's made, or well, things are just going from bad to worse for Kerensky. He tries to order the army out, and instead they stay put, and then basically switch sides. So this is awful for Kerensky. And in fact, 
uh, he's limited at this point to driving around the city, trying to find any soldiers that will support him and the provisional government. Three days later, um, Kerensky is getting desperate. He then orders the arrest of the Bolsheviks. But at this point, it's it's hopeless. The, the police, the army, he's got almost no supporters. So he can order the arrest of the Bolsheviks all he likes, but no one's going to do it for him. And that's precisely what happens. And he just looks ridiculous because the army and the police force just refuse to do what he says. And instead they support the, uh, the Bolsheviks and the military revolutionary committee, the MRC, the soldiers actually take over the most important parts of the city and start to fly the Bolshevik flag and say, well, we're going to control this for the Bolsheviks now. Then 25th, 26th of October, this is the end of the provisional government. Yeah, okay. The Bolsheviks already controlling big chunks of the city, attack the Winter Palace and kick out the provisional government. Okay. Um, and that's how they take over. Not everyone is happy with this. Okay. Lots of people in the Petrograd Soviet, remember the Mensheviks, they weren't the only ones. There were the Social, uh, Socialist Revolutionary Party, the SRs, and the cadets as well. Uh, all were parties similar to the Mensheviks in some way, that they were socialists, they believed in a kind of communism, and they thought the Bolsheviks were too extreme. And these moderate parties, you can call them moderates, they were happy to work with uh, the Kerensky and the provisional government. So when Lenin, and the Bolsheviks take over, they're horrified. They think, what are you doing? You've just ruined the February Revolution, the thing that we'd fought for. Yeah, we'd achieved the bourgeois revolution and we were happy to, to keep that going. And now you're threatening that by trying to push it too far, too fast, and have this proletariat revolution, this workers revolution. So many of them leave the city and that's important because what follows isn't going to be straightforward for the Bolsheviks and they're still going to have a lot of people in Russia that don't like them and want to stop them. So supporters of the provisional government and supporters of the moderate socialists run away from the city and move to other places and they're going to come back into the story later on. Right, there's three reasons, like I said, why this happened. First of all was Lenin's influence. We've discussed that. The weaknesses of the provisional government, okay. Uh, all down to Kerensky losing support. The army and the navy won't do what he's asked. The other issue the provisional government has is this thing about land reform. Yeah, remember, at this time, Russia is still mostly f rural, okay? mostly farmers, peasants, and they want land. They are sick and tired of working for the rich lords, and instead they want to own their own land. And the provisional government had been promising land reform but hadn't got around to it. Yeah, it was too busy fighting the war. It was too busy doing other things. And so the peasants are getting impatient and the peasants are just beginning to take the land for themselves. They're beginning to attack the, the landowners, the, the wealthy peasants, the wealthy landowners out in the countryside are starting to be attacked and no one's stopping them. The provisional government doesn't have the power to put army soldiers or put police out there to stop the peasants from basically rioting and rebelling and, you know, and, and taking over the countryside. So the provisional government looks weak. If they can't even control their own peasants, then who's gonna respect them? Nobody. Um, and the last point is, and this is very important, is Trotsky, okay? We haven't really mentioned him too much so far in the course, but he's a very important figure. Okay, he's a um, long-serving, respected revolutionary inside Russia. Okay, he was important in the 1905 revolution. Um, so he's popular, he's well known, and people like him. They like him more than they like Lenin, to be honest. They see Lenin as too extreme, and Trotsky is more of a moderate. Now Trotsky works his way up and becomes very important. Uh, he actually comes to control the Petrograd Soviet, uh, which is incredibly important, because it means that he, we can do two things, and they're both very clever. One, he can convince moderates that the Bolsheviks are, are the good guys and to support them. And people do, people, lots and lots of people support the Bolsheviks because Trotsky asked them to, not because they like Lenin. And again, that becomes important later on, yeah? 
I don't like the Bolsheviks, but okay, Trotsky, if you tell me they're good people, if you tell me they're trustworthy, if you tell me Lenin uh, is a good man and knows what he's talking about, I'll support you and the Bolsheviks. Okay, so he convinces these people to come on board. That's the first thing he does that's clever. The second thing he does that's clever is that when the Bolsheviks take over, because Trotsky is a Bolshevik and Trotsky is side by side with Lenin towards the end of this, um, he can sell it to the rest of Russia, not as a Bolshevik power grab, but as a Petrograd Soviet power grab. And that's really important because this uh, Petrograd Soviet, lots of other Soviets had appeared all over Russia. And so he claims this is not a victory for the Bolsheviks, it's a, it's a victory for Soviets. And so all the other Soviets in Russia go, oh, look, that's good, he's one of us. The Soviets are taking over, and that's, that's easier for the Russian people to understand and for them to accept than Lenin and his Bolshevik mates have just taken over the capital city. Okay, so that's why it's important. Right, have a go at the questions on section 9 and on the following slide, okay? Uh, and then obviously take the online quiz if you can as well. All right, good luck.